watching WGOL, Channel 7 News. I'm Mose Delane Belton, and today is Sunday, April 26, 2020. Good morning, Gola. If you have not signed up for the Remind, which is the text message system to let you know about the happenings here at GOLA, about anything that's going on during the week, please do. If you text at GOLA to 81010, you'll receive all the information that Pastor has to give out anytime during the week. If you would like to give your offering or bring it to the church, you may do that by putting it in the mailbox in the front door of the Enrichment Center. There is a mailbox there and you can slide it in there. But you can also do digital and give through Givelify. So that app, you have that on your phone and it will bring up GOLA. You can send your money and bam, it's all that easy. Let us keep in prayer. Sandra Conrad, who was in the hospital, as well as Amanda Perry and her son Caleb, who were in a car accident recently. But praise God, they only came out with scratches. And, but we just want to have that continual prayer of their recovery. Now for your week in review. On Sunday, we will have Sunday service via Facebook Live. It will also be posted on our church's YouTube channel. At 11.15, the youth will have service via Zoom meetings. So if for more information on that, please see Ms. Kendall. On Wednesday, we'll have Bible study via Facebook Live at 12.30 with Pastor Banks, at 6.30 with Brother Brian Mills, and the youth will have it at 7 p.m. via Zoom meetings. So please go yourselves accordingly and let's stay in contact, Gola. Happy birthday to Bernita Oaks, Natalia Eaton, and Willie Gist. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. God loves you just the way she made you. This has been Mo's Motivational Mo. It's over now. There's no more purpose for my lungs because I'm not breathing. If I thought that I was still alive, then I think I was dreaming. I just left the earth. My soul escaped my body now. I'm dead. And I'm rising into the heavens to find out what lies ahead. This life is over. And my time is done on earth. There's no more stressing. I'm about to meet the one that gave me all my life and blessings. Now it's time to hear his voice. And it's time to feel his embrace. And it's that time to meet my God. And now it's time to see his face. I'm at the gate. And I don't want to wait. I want to see my savior. I'm going to feel his presence. Have his safety and bed in his favor. Wait, they open up the gates and sunlight dances through the entrance. If I was alive, I'd pass out from the beauty of his presence. I can sense him all around me. I can feel him every place. He's here. I feel it, but that's not enough. I want to see his face. They close the gate as I walk in. Now any memories are useless. Any earthly love is worthless because no other can produce this. So much color, so much love. Life and wind and sun and love and music, so much happiness. God loves us and this paradise can prove it. Uh, where's he at though? I just want to see his face. I'll be around it. And I'm walking on the streets of gold, but I ain't getting my crown yet. Wait, I feel something. I turn around and I catch eyes with his. And I've never seen him before, but I still know who it is. Right now, I'm face to face with Jesus, looking God right in the eye. Immediately I bowed, and if I was alive, I would have cried. Now God was always right beside me, but I see him. I can touch him. I'll exhort him. I'm going to praise and magnify him because I love him. And I tell him, you're my king. This happiness cannot be doubled. You're my rock, my life, my ever-present help in times of trouble. And I love you. God, I love you. For a 
fraternity I show you. But he looks me in the eye, and then he whispers, do I know you? <laughs> do you know me? Yeah, you made me. I was in church every service. But he tells me church without applying what you learned is worthless. But I was a choir member. I praised through with poems and acting. But he says he checked the book of life and that my name was absent. And I'm laughing like, there must be a mistake. I just won't hear it. Then he says I praised him, but I didn't have him in my spirit. I can't bear it. Little thought I gave you praise wholeheartedly. But then he turns his head away. And then he says, depart from me. I start to scream, but it's too late. Immediately I feel the flame and I'm ashamed. It's me to blame. I could have stopped all of this pain. Life ended like this for me? This ain't how I wanted to conclude. Uh, that's what in real life it won't be. But don't let this be your future. You may go to church, but man, you gotta live it. Don't be two-faced. Don't be hypocrites, guys. Don't be dogs and ladies. Don't be loose days. We ain't got no time. So right now, drop the gangs and lift your hands and let them in before it ends. Let's praise them while we had the chance.
and your love towards us, we thank you, God, that we are yet in the land of the living. We thank you, God, and we thank you with our lives. Our lives are holy and acceptable unto you through faith. So, Lord, have your way in this service today. Move by your power. And we'll give you the glory and honor and praise. In Jesus' name.
God is my enemy. Amen. Amen. Yes. As promised, we're going back to 1 Peter, and I'm thankful for the Holy Spirit for the revelation and His Word. Uh, I've never preached the second part of this text before, but it goes together. You can't preach one without preaching the other part of the text because yep. it doesn't make sense. Amen. So let's go back to the text, the New International Version. This is what you heard last week. Um, and last week we preached from verses 3 to 5. And this one we're going to do some more teach from verses, preach and teach from verses 6 through 9. And when you see the totality of it, it's going to make sense. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who, who in his great mercy, he gave us a new birth and to a living hope through the resurrection of Christ from the dead into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. This is the inheritance he has kept for you through faith, who through, who through faith are shielded by God's power yes. until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. Mm -hmm. We dealt with that last week. You know, why you need a rest, why we need a resurrection. But this <coughs> week, we want to shift and talk about verses 6 through 9 so it makes sense. He continues, Peter continues, In all this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith, of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire may result in the praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, you love him. You believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the end result of your faith, the salvation of your soul. Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's pray together the Lord's Prayer as we are, we are mindful of uh, those who are sick. We're praying for Sister Sandra Conrad and certainly praying for uh, Sister Perry and uh, Caleb Alex and uh, those who we don't know. We um, certainly continue to pray for uh, this nation, this world, this coronavirus. Pray for those folk who, who want to willingly die by, by, by moving too fast. Uh, I'm praying also for common sense. There have been reports of people getting uh, the, the Center for Disease and Control getting reports of people ingesting Lysol and Disinfected. You all have more sense than that. Amen. Don't listen to some. <laughs> Amen. You gotta have more discernment than that. You got to, you got to know who you listen to, and you gotta know. See, one thing I have learned is you gotta. Things don't bother you when people say when you know the source. <laughs> when you know the source of where it comes from, but I know the source. And because I know these sorts, so, so let's be mindful of that. Uh, be mindful of all that. That, that. that makes no sense to even do anything remotely close to that. But people are doing it. That's because people have lost their mind because they don't have real faith. So they try to put faith in the government. They try to put faith in the doctors. It's good to have the. It's it's good to believe in them what they say because prayer for that knowledge comes from God. But you can only have faith in God. You can only have faith and trust in God. That's what we're going to talk about today. Let's pray to the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, and forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Father, Lord, hear our prayer, give ear to our cry. We're praying for this world. We pray that you would move by your power. Coronavirus is not stronger than you. But you're sending us a message through this. This is something that allowed the world, the whole world to stop. 
And God, we need people to get their minds right. And the only way to get your minds right is keep our minds standing on you. It's okay to keep written up this season with a season, but season's not God. And so, Lord, we lift up our voice today and pray that you would be a revival in the land, a revival of faith where people learn to trust you and not anything else. We have seen, you have shown us that the church of God is not about buildings or it's not about structures. The church is about people. You have shown us that the church is bigger than anything because the church was established through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so the church has a role. The church is about loving God and loving people. It doesn't matter whether we're in this building or not. We still have church. Because you, because the church is in us. We're not in the church. The church has to be in us. As the young man said on the uh, announcements at the end, you can go to church, but if it's not in you, then you're fooling yourself. If it's not in your spirit, if you don't love the Lord with all your heart, your mind, and soul, all humans make mistakes. You're going to make mistakes. Be quick to repent. But listen, get, give your heart, just mind, soul to God. Seek God while you can be found. Give God everything you have. That's what God is looking for. God is not looking for people who can sit in a pew every Sunday morning. Come occasionally. It doesn't even matter how many times you come to church. It matters if the church is in you. Are you committed to doing and being the walking and talking examples of Christ in a dying world? I pray, God, that this opportunity to be quarantined will help us to know who you are and even greater. And we'll do We'll be who you call us to be. Yes. And because we are who we, you call us to be by faith, we'll do what you call us to do. Yes. Keep us where we kept, bless and we'll be blessed. Bless the word that's coming. May you anointed by your power. George can't do anything, but you can do it. Anointed by your power. In Jesus' name. Amen.
strength and glory. May you speak through this earthen vessel that the sheep might hear. Lord, you told Peter, if you love me, feed the sheep. If you love me, feed the sheep. If you love me, feed the sheep. Take care of the sheep. May the words today take care of the sheep. Christ in me. Amen. First Peter 1, 6 through 9. In all of this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief of all kinds of trials. These have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith, of greater worth than gold, which perishes, even though refined by fire, may result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you have not seen him now, you believe in him, and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. But you are receiving, you are receiving, you are receiving, you are receiving yes. the end result of your faith, the salvation of your soul. Is that what your Bible says? Yes. I want to talk to you for a little while from the subject. Because Jesus got up, I got to learn how to go through. Come on. All right, now. Oh. Say it. Mm. <clears throat> I'm thankful for the move of the Spirit. And Jesus said it this way. The spirit gives life. The flesh counts for nothing. Mm -hmm. Two weeks ago, when we celebrated resurrection, mm -hmm. and the Lord spoke to my heart and says, I want you to teach and expound upon in the next few weeks that the resurrection is not a one-off event. Right. <clears throat> that the power of the resurrection is not just celebrating Easter Sunday morning. Uh, with new hats, new clothes, jelly beans, half dinners. We have trivialized the faith. And the reason why we've trivialized the faith is because of faith. Yes. We've trivialized the faith because we have not had the faith that we needed. Yeah. And if we have not had the faith that we needed, because we've not heard what we needed to hear. <laughs> right. Because scripture says faith cometh by hearing okay. and hearing the word of God. It, hearing once would imply you hear it with your ears. I wish somebody would hear it. Right. Right. But hearing twice means you got to hear with your ear and you got to hear with your spirit. That's why Jesus was saying, let those who have ear to hear. He spoke in parables. Let those have ear to hear. Hear what the spirit is saying. Does that make sense? That's right. He said, let those who have ear to hear, hear what the spirit is saying. So that lets me know that when you hear, I can hear. It's almost like you call somebody and they hear you, but they don't hear you. Right. That's why somebody came up with the saying, y'all don't hear me though. <laughs> y'all don't hear me because they hear you, but they don't hear you. And I think this was happening in the church. We heard the word, but we've not heard the word. Right. I wish somebody would hit me. Right. We heard it, it went in the ear, but it didn't sink in the spirit. Right. So it came in one ear and went out the other ear, and that's why. Because when it gets into your spirit, it begins to formulate your faith. Yes. It begins to formulate your faith. And all the times, and look, and I can say this, and I believe this by a shadow of a doubt. My reading of scripture, my study of scripture, especially during this time of coronavirus, God is more concerned about our faith than anything else. Yes. Because our faith will dictate our actions. Right. Our faith will dictate our thought process. Yes. Our faith will dictate everything about our walk with God. Yes. If you, because the scripture says that, oh, hallelujah, yes. thank you, Jesus. Right. The scripture says without faith, it's impossible to please God. Yes. It didn't, listen, listen. That's the only thing that the scripture says that, is, that, you, that, that, that it's impossible to please God without it. It didn't say it's impossible to please God without works. It didn't say it's impossible to please God without love. Thank you. 
believe God because they didn't come to him much believe that he is a reward of those who diligently seek his faith. Faith is the most important thing you have. That's what it is. Yeah, it is. Even the old folk would say, prayer is the key. <laughs> To try to get into a, a building or a room that was locked and you pulled out the wrong key? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm. That's good. You had the key in your hand, wow. but you still couldn't get in the door. Right. See, you could be praying mm -hmm. and you could put the key in the door, but if you don't have faith, you can get in. Right. <laughs> Can somebody walk with me on this one? Rejoice 
in the fact that no matter what I'm going through, God's going to keep me. Yeah. Because Jesus went through so I could go through. Right. I had to learn to shout for real and be. See, that's one thing that you tell people that you shout, but you know when you have. You got to listen. I know this might sound crazy, but it's supernatural. You got to learn to be happy when you're going through. Because when you are grieved by various trials, you know that God will keep you as your faith is being tested as fire. Can I walk through the wall? Anybody have that faith tested by fire? Anybody ever had to go through something and you didn't understand why you were going through it? I'll help you understand why you were going through it today. See, 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 if need be, Peter said, you have been grieved. You know, sometimes we think, and this is the fallacy of, of people who aren't Christian, or people don't, who are Christian who don't understand. They think that, you know, we, we ain't never supposed to uh, go through nothing. That, that as a Christian, you, you, you're supposed to be like, you know, Superman, fast man, speeding bullet, you know, you know uh, 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 bullets bounce off of you. But Peter says there is a need be, if there need be for various trials. Because God has a purpose not only for the trial, but for the heavy grief that you feel in the trial. That's the reason why you're going through. I'm going to help you with that in just a minute. But listen, listen, you got to understand that because God is with you, you got to learn to have joy in the trial. I'm going to explain the word, but I'm going to explain why God allows us to go through it. But it all boils down to our faith. You got to learn to have joy in the midst I'm going to stay with that right now. Have joy in the midst of the trial if you really believe God is with you. If you really believe that God is with me. Remember, this is the God that, caught, that set the stars in the sky. That's right. This is the God who put the sun in the motion. What would the sun on this morning by pulling back the clouds All and right. letting the sun shine through? Yeah. If that God is with me, why am I going to worry about when folk talk about me? <laughs>
through the faith. Yeah, that's right. See, your faith isn't tested. So God can know how much faith and what kind of faith you have.
let you go through. And then something touches you. And a joy comes over you. It's a joy that's out of no calorie. It's a joy that went down to hell and Christ was by. It's the joy that came back up out of his life. Walked out of the tomb. It's the joy that told the Mary to tell my disciples to meet me in Galilee. It's the joy that made her to believe for the whole two days and told them who he was. It's the joy that made her. He said, Go to all the world and teach. Preach by the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And hope I'm with you. And it's the joy that's with us right now. As the master lifts down from glory and says, That's my child. Just trust me, child. Just trust me. No matter what you go through, remember what I did for you. That's what it boils down to. See, oftentimes when we go through something, we forget Christ's sacrifice. Yes. But if you can remember yes. that God's keeping you, I hope I'm making sense. If you can remember that God is keeping you, yes. and that God is going to keep you to get your reward, and that as you go through this life, you got you to gotta get your faith stronger, and your faith is stronger as you go through. You trust him the more. And you go through with joy because you know he's with you. Joy is your reward. Eternal joy. Welcome to day. But joy right now. Not just eternal joy. But joy right now. Down in my soul. Ooh. 
God's parents not leave me to go back today. I saw this Spirit, because I want you to hear this. I'm going to the way. Because Mark and Seth came up like, you know, when you think about the power of this word, never would have made it. Never would have made it without you. And now I see. That's what Paul Peter was doing. How you were there for me. I went through. I went through. But I'm strong now. Strong, yes, I'm wise. 